Hey class, welcome back to another example problem here. Uh, what we have going on on this problem, it's kind of a fun one, all right? So we got this knight, he's trying to sneak into this castle here to rescue his fair maiden, all right? But as you can see, he decides to stop one third of the way up the ladder that he had leaned against the wall to kind of give himself a pep talk. You can see he's, you know, reaching out, practicing his speech that he's gonna tell his lady, you know, when he grabs her about how much he loves her and wants to save her and everything. So he's, you know, trying to, yeah, pump himself up for the takeover. So, um, or the or takeover, I guess it's more of a rescue than a takeover, I hope. Anyway, so that's all fun and good. We're told that uh, the ladder that he stands on has a weight of 180 newtons and that the man has a weight of 800 newtons. Um, so that's good. And he stops one third of the way up. So the ladder has a total length of five meters, we're told. So this here is five meters. And he's stopped here at a distance of five over three meters up the ladder. Um, the center mass of the ladder, we can assume it's uniform. So we can assume that that's halfway up. So that would be two and a half meters up. Um, and yeah, we're then told that due to moss on the side of the castle here, there's no friction force, but there is friction on the ground, obviously. If not, the ladder would fall. Um, which is not good news. In fact, I had a friend who had uh, friction at the ground fail him when borrowing a ladder of mine. Um, he's fine, but it didn't go that well for him. So good, good to know your physics. All right, so we're asked to discover three things in this. We want to know the two normal forces, so the normal force at the ground and at the wall, as well as the minimum coefficient of static friction at the ground in order to prevent the ladder from slipping. So to help us understand what's going on, I went ahead and drew a free body diagram, or I grabbed a free body diagram for you. So what you see is there's normal one, which is the normal of the wall, normal two, normal of the ground. Notice again, they're both perpendicular to the surface of contact, the static force of friction at the ground, which we wanna find that coefficient there. And we have the weight of the ladder acting halfway up the ladder, the weight of the man acting one third of the way up the ladder, um, and then I labeled some distances. So based on the angle and the five foot length of the ladder, I know that this is four meters, and I know that this here is three meters, again, which you can get just from geometry. Um, and then also using geometry then, since he stopped one third of the way up, I know that this perpendicular distance is one meter, and this is 1.5 meters to the center of mass. Now you might not be inclined to write those distances right away. I just put them on here because I know I'm going to need them later, but you can discover them as you need them going forward. So anyway, we got this set up and we understand, okay, we need some forces. All right. We have three unknowns, which is a little disconcerting, making me think we're probably going to need to use three equations, but I do know that since we have rigid body equilibrium, the whole thing's in equilibrium, we can do some of the forces in the x equals zero, we can do some of the forces in the y equals zero, and we can do some of torque is also equal to zero about some rotational axis. So let's go ahead and yeah, try to dive in, do each of these different processes. So first, if we do some of the forces in the x direction, we can observe that we have the static force of friction in the positive x direction minus the normal force number one equals zero, right? So we can see, all right, my static force of friction is gonna be equal to my normal force number one, but I don't know what either of those are yet, so bummer, can't solve yet. Some of the forces in the y direction, all right? We have normal two going up minus weight of the man minus weight of the ladder equals zero, right? Those are the only forces in the y direction. Oh, bonus, look, we can solve for one of our unknowns already, right? Normal two is just gonna be equal to the weight of the man, which was 800 newtons, plus the weight of the ladder, which was 180 newtons. So normal number two, we can solve for straight away as being equal to 980 newtons. Boom, box worthy, we already got one of our answers. Sweet, now some of the torque. Now some of the torque's probably gonna take more room, so I think maybe I'll just erase this from over here, and I think I'll just go ahead and pop down to do some of the torque a little further down. Maybe I'll do it in a different color as well to stay organized. So now we're gonna do some of the torques. I'm gonna choose 
point B that I labeled down here as my axis of rotation. So some of the torques equals zero about point B. So we're gonna do some of the torques here. Again, keeping in mind anything that causes clockwise rotation will be a negative torque. Anything causing counterclockwise rotation is going to be a positive torque. So let's start with what forces we have causing rotation. So first of all, N2 is acting at point B. Perpendicular distance is zero, so N2 does not cause any torque. Same with the static force of friction. It's acting at point B, so the perpendicular distance is zero, so therefore it's not generating any torque. Now N1 up here, normal force one, will indeed cause a torque, cause it to want to rotate. So keeping in mind N1, then the torque due to N1 is gonna be N1 multiplied by its perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation, which again is an axis going through the page at point B. So if I extended the line of action of N1, there's my line of action, the shortest possible distance is this distance here, which is the same as my four meter distance over here, all right, just so you can see where that comes from. So torque one, is going to be N1 multiplied by the perpendicular distance of 4 meters. All right. Then we're going to have a counterclockwise torque generated here by the weight of the ladder. So it's going to be minus the weight of the ladder multiplied by that perpendicular distance, which again, if we go through the same process, here's my line of action. And so here's my shortest possible distance, which is the one and a half meters. So it's gonna be multiplied by 1.5 meters. And then minus the weight of the man, multiplied by its perpendicular distance of one meter. And that's it, right? So all of that equals zero. And if we notice, look, boom, N1, we don't know, but we want. We know the weight of the man and the weight of the ladder. So we can really easily solve. N1 is just gonna be equal to the weight of the ladder, 180 newtons, multiplied by 1.5 meters, plus the weight of the man, which is 800 newtons, multiplied by 1.0 meters, and all that divided by four meters. So if you plug and chug, you should find that N1 is equal to 268 newtons, boxworthy for sure. Which means, guess what? Our force of static friction is equal to N1, so it's also equal to 268 newtons. So at first glance, you think, oh boy, howdy, we're done, right? But no, that's not entirely true because we weren't asked to find the force of static friction, but instead we were asked to find the minimum coefficient of friction needed. So if you're at the very minimum, what that means is that your force of static friction is equal to mu times the normal force at that location, which in this case, the normal force at the point of contact here is N2. And so mu then is gonna be equal to the force of static friction over N2. So the force of static friction is 268 newtons, N2 is 980 newtons. So that minimum coefficient of static friction should be equal to 0 0.273. So that is box worthy answer number three, and we now completed an entire torque equilibrium problem. Again, notice some of the forces, some of the torques, we had to use all three equations to solve for our three different unknowns. Hope that helps, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.